from Mechanical Pros here with Brian. We're going to be talking about recovering your refrigerant, weighing it, and then charging and the proper ways to do that. Brian, what do we got going on here? Yeah, we're going to start off talking just kind of the basics. We've got us a nice little Daikin condensing unit over here. We're going to talk about the proper way that you would connect all your gear to it to recover the refrigerant out of the system. Say you were making a repair, maybe you had to change a compressor, reverse the valve, something in the refrigeration system, and you needed to get the gas out of it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to obviously have a manifold set over here. The number one thing I'm going to do first is I'm going to make sure my hoses are in good condition. I'm going to make sure the little rubber O-rings in here are in good condition. The best way to do that is just unscrew your hose and visually look at them and make sure they're not cut. The more times you tighten this on there, it'll eventually cut those little rubber O-rings and can cause issues. You don't want to be pulling any non-condensables in. You don't want to be losing refrigerant out. Just minuscule amounts, but still good practice to always make sure your refrigerant hoses, whether you be charging systems or pulling vacuums, you're using the right refrigeration tools in the process and they're good quality components and everything's in good working order. So we verified that we know our system's good. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to come over and I'm going to hook my suction line port over to my suction pipe or my suction service fitting. And then my high pressure side, I'm going to connect to my liquid line service fitting. So, you know, everybody should kind of get what that is. Blue's gonna be the suction, the red's gonna be the high side. And then I've got my charging hose here. So my charging hose is going over to my recovery machine. We're using an Appian recovery machine, great little recovery machine, does a great job, really strong device and we're going to pull the gas from the system into this recovery machine pump it through the recovery machine back into that recovery tank so i've got my gauges hooked up but before i really do anything before i start pulling gas out or open my gauges next step i want to make sure i've got a clean dry recovery tank so the recovery tank beside john over there we want to make sure that doesn't have any old gas in it it doesn't you know if we're planning on reusing the refrigerant, we want a brand new tank that's clean and in a vacuum. So we're gonna assume that's what we've got over here. So we wanna reuse this refrigerant after we do our repair. So next step after I do that, I've got my hoses connected up. I'm on the suction port of my recovery machine and my discharge is going out to my recovery tank. So the next thing I'm gonna do before I even start my machine is I gotta make sure all these hoses, they may have just air in them. That would be a non-condensable. If we're reusing this refrigerant, we don't want to recover oxygen into the recovery tank and then put it back in our system later. So the way I'm going to do that, I've got my hoses hooked up. Obviously, I'm not going to release gas at this point. I'm just demonstrating. I'd have my hoses hooked up. My valves are all over here are closed. Everything's nice and tight and closed. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open these service valves here on the unit, which will let refrigerant flow down to this point. And I'm going to come over here and open both of these. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna crack these gauges. Next thing I'm gonna do is come over here and unscrew this guy just a little bit. I'm gonna open this valve and we're gonna purge just a little bit of refrigerant. Just, but now I know this hose, all the air is out of it. But now I've still got air in here up to this line. So at this point, I'd open this valve. I'll open this discharge valve again. I have not started my system at all yet open that up and then I'll come over to this guy. I'll crack this a little bit. I'll crack this valve until I've here refrigerant flowing through here. Now I know I've purged all the air out of all my hoses out of the machine. I tighten this back up. Now I know for sure I've got no non-condensables in any of my hoses, my recovery machine. It's all ready to go. At this point, what I'm gonna do before I still even turn this guy on, I'm gonna have a nice deep vacuum on that recovery tank because I just purchased it. It's a nice clean tank. I'm just gonna open my tank and let the vacuum in that tank go ahead and pull a little bit of the gas out. Just speeds the process up a little bit. I always like to recover gas on the suction port of the recovery tank. The reason I do that, the liquid port has a dip tube that runs all the way down into the bottom of the tank. The suction port is just vapor, so its dip tube is only a couple inches. So as you're recovering gas and you start stacking liquid up in that tank, well, if you gotta push it all the way down to that dip tube, it's going to take a lot longer. It's going to make the tank get hotter. So I always recover on that suction side. It's a good little tip. It makes things go faster. So now that I've gone to that point, I've, the vacuum in the tank's taking all the gas it can take. I'm going to go ahead and turn everything back off. I have everything back off. Turn this back off. At that point, I'll start my recovery machine. I'll open the suction port. 
I'll open the discharge, then I'll open my gauges, and this guy's gonna start pumping gas out of there. I like to pump the liquid first until it gets down to a point where you don't really see it making much ground, then I'll open the vapor. You can open them both at the same time. I just prefer doing liquid first, try to get all the liquid out as quick as I can, and then the vapor, because the vapor takes a little longer. Another important thing to remember about this, which probably should have mentioned at the beginning, Let's say during the recovery process, something happens to my refrigeration scales. Scales I got over there, John. It's a good set of scales, but they've been around a while. You can tell. What if something happens in the middle of the process? I got my tank sitting on that scale. I need to weigh it to know how much gas I got in it. And then for some reason, my scale fails. Well, on the side of these tanks over there on John's side, it's tag TW, and then it has a number beside it. Tank weight, 28 probably point something pounds. So if something did happen to my scales, I would know after I got the gas all recovered and I had to just weigh the full tank, I would just subtract that 28 point whatever pounds the tank weight is. And then that's another way I can figure out how much gas I just pulled out. Sometimes your scales will give out on you. You just never know what's gonna happen when you're up on the roof, you're way away from anything. So just a good thing to know. Um, worst case scenario, just weigh the full tank and subtract, I believe it's right in there somewhere. Yeah, 28.1. 28.1, so just subtract 28.1 pounds, whatever your full weight is, and then you know what the charge you just pulled out of the system. Another good thing to remember is that refrigerant tank's gonna get hot. So we're pumping gas in it, the more pressure gets on that tank, the more temperature you get, the higher the pressure, the higher the temperature, that tank's gonna start getting hot. With 410A, it gets hot much faster than it used to do with R22. The hotter that tank gets, the slower everything goes. It comes to a point where this guy, the pressure gets so high on this machine, it's just gonna shut off. Few ways around that. It, the best thing, quickest thing I'd always do, I always had a couple hundred foot of hose pipe on my truck for cleaning coils in the summer and stuff. If there was a hose bib connection close to me, I would just take a short hose, drape the other end of the hose on the tank and just crack it and let a little bit of cold water pour over this tank. It'll keep it nice and cool. The faster method would be to sit it in a bucket of ice, which is great, but sometimes, you know, you're on a roof, the yeah. truck's a mile away from you, it's kind of hard to tote ice in a bucket up on the roof, but usually you can find a hose connection if you got enough hose pipe, you can run right off the tank, and that really speeds things up too. And then one other thing to remember, depending on what type of gear you got, there may be a refrigerant accumulator inside this thing. You'll start seeing your gauges will start looking like you've almost got all the gas out of it, the pressures are low, and, but just take a look inside the unit. And if there is a suction accumulator in there, holds extra refrigerant, you'll see a frost line on it. That's there's still liquid refrigerant in there. It just hasn't all boiled off yet from the recovery machine. So you either can just leave it on there and run, or if you happen to have a heat gun on your truck, don't use torches. If you've got a heat gun on your truck, run that heat gun over that, and that'll start help to boil that refrigerant off, get it into vapor so it'll come out quicker. Um, I've done that myself, not realized it was there, thought I had all the gas out of it. And the next thing you know, here I'm ready to start working. I pull my Schrader core out and there's still a little gas coming out and it's because it's, it's trapped in that accumulator. So good thing to remember, just when you think you've got all the gas in, depending on the piece of gear you're working on, just take a look inside the condenser, make sure you don't see any frost lines on anything, because that's a good indication there's still some gas in that unit. But after you get them down and it's reading below zero on both your gauge sets, I go ahead and valve this guy off, valve my machine off, kill the power, valve everything else off, and then take your hoses loose. And now all the gas is out of your machine and you're ready for your, your next step in the process, whatever you may be there to do. And then so you measure, you're weighing that, that refrigerator? Yeah, usually I leave it on my tank the whole time just so I can visually see that it's still pulling gas. Because if you don't have it on your scales and you're just looking at this, it may not be taking any gas at all, but you think it is. But if you've got it and you can see your scales and it's adding weight to it all the time, you know it's pulling gas. The slower the tank starts filling, you start knowing, okay, I've almost got all the refrigerant out now. But again, it, it can fool you because you may have some liquid trapped somewhere in, the, in there and just a good visual check for any spots with frost on them will let you know that. And once it hasn't pulled any gas, my scales haven't changed in a while, everything's below zero here, then I'll shut my stuff off and hook her back up and be ready for the next step. And then you, you know how much you pulled out mm -hmm. just by weighing it? Yep, and then weigh it, write it down, and your notepad and your phone, whatever. I mean, yeah. you, you think you're gonna remember it, but your phone rings, next thing you know, now you don't remember. So yeah, always, always take good notes, write it down. 
and a good rule of thumb on a split system like this especially, you've got a data charge on the condenser, but that's just on the condenser. Extra refrigerant has been added to the line set and the indoor unit. So for the next guy, it might be you, it might be five years down the road, somebody comes along, always good to pull this cover off, write it on the inside where it's out of the sun, but the next guy who's there is working, he's gonna take this off and he's gonna say, oh, well, isn't that cool? Somebody had the foresight to write down what the total refrigerant charge was for me and now it does the customer the favors what it does it you know so the unit gets charged right every time so charging her back up um, it's not exactly the same process we use some of the same components obviously we're going to use our refrigerant scales because we've got to make sure we got all the gas back in but i'm not going to use my recovery machine i've done it i've seen other guys do it i'm not going to say i haven't done it but it's not good it's not good for the equipment you can reverse the flow on this machine and have it pump liquid, but it's not made to do that. It'll, it'll break the valves in your recovery machine. And these, these guys are pretty expensive. Even the cheapest recovery machine is expensive. So, so just, it's not good. Don't try to use your recovery machine to pump gas in. What I do is I take this completely out of the equation. My charging hose, I'll move this. I'll take this hose and now put it on my tank, get this little guy out of the equation. And then now I'm hooked straight to my liquid line now because I want to pull liquid off the bottom of that tank. And I've already made my repair. So my unit's in a deep vacuum. Whatever, for whatever reason I pulled this gas out of it, I had to make a repair to the system, which means I would have pulled a good vacuum. I'm going to use the vacuum on this system to pull in a mu as much of that liquid refrigerant as it'll possibly take. And it's going to take a lot of it. You'll probably get two thirds at least of your charge just by the vacuum from the system. Always do it as a liquid. You're going to get more gas out of it that way. Now say, say the system holds 20 pounds. I was able to get 12 pounds in with the vacuum. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the thermostat. I'm going to turn my disconnect off, but I'm going to go to the stat and I'm going to turn it on for cooling. I'm going to go back to the roof where my unit is. Look in here. My contactor should be pulled in because my thermostat's powered from my air handler. I'm going to turn my disconnect on. This thing's going to start. It's going to have enough gas in it to run, but it's not got the full charge in it. Then you can charge with your suction gauge, you can charge liquid into this thing, but you have to be really careful. If you put liquid in it too fast, it won't vaporize and you'll hit your compressor with liquid and compressors do not like to pump liquid. You can damage your compressor. So the best rule of thumb, the way I was taught coming up is as you're ready to start adding gas, you add, crack your valve and say this thing's running, say it's 410A system, we got most of the charge in, maybe it's running 100 PSI. I'm gonna crack it and that needle is gonna start jumping. When it jumps, that tells me it's meter and liquid. If it's not liquid, it, the needle doesn't move, but if it's meter and liquid, you'll know it, your needle will jump. 10 PSI above the operating pressure. If you just stick with that rule, it'll never make liquid back to the compressor. If you just pour the coals of that thing, it's gonna be liquid back on your compressor. You might get a charge and walk away from it, but you've damaged the compressor by doing that. So just barely crack your gauge to your 10 PSI above whatever the operating pressure was. And you can just kind of leave it like that and it'll track as the pressure comes up, it'll stay 10 PSI above that. Your needle will sit there and jump. And then you know when you've got all the liquid in it because the needle will settle out. Doesn't mean you got all the gas in it. Once the needle settles out and you know you're all on vapor, I'll switch over to the vapor side of my tank where I know there's no risk of pulling liquid now. Maybe there's a little liquid left in. Then you can open that dude wide open and let the unit pull in the rest of the vapor from the tank. Because we know how much gas we took out. We've got it on our scales. We zero our scales out. Now it's going to start subtracting. So say it pulled 20 pounds. We wait till it says minus 20 pounds. We got it all. Sometimes you just can't get all of the vapor out of that tank because the pressure on that tank is getting close to where we are here, you may have to go to your truck and add a half a pound of virgin refrigerant to it. Um, it's just really hard to get that last four or five ounces out of recovery tank. But um, if, if you just make sure you do that, make sure you never, if you're gonna charge liquid on your suction ports, which really, cause you can't, you're not, when it's running, you're not gonna charge liquid on the liquid port. The pressure is gonna be higher than it is in the tank, but it'll be lower here and it'll suck that liquid in. You just have to be very careful and meter it in there. Of course, we're gonna be connected with our thermometer to our suction line and our liquid. We're gonna be watching our superheat and subcooling as we're doing that. But if the unit was not undercharged or anything before, as long as we weigh in what we weighed out, you really, you should be spot on. But of course, you always want to verify superheat and subcooling. But as long as we pull 20 pounds out, we know it didn't have a leak, customer never had a problem, 
with you know cooling, it just had a failure for some reason. You should be putting the same amount of gas back in it. Hey, Brian, I always see guys flip these things upside down mm -hmm. on the scale. Yep. Are they pulling from the suction side when they do So that? that would be if you had virgin refrigerant, you've only got one service port on that tank. So mm -hmm. if you want liquid, you got because it's still got a small dip tube yeah. on it. So you can't, if you got a new refrigerant tank that's not a recovery cylinder, the dip tube's really short. So mm -hmm. if you want to do liquid, you got to flip your tank flip upside, upside down. down. That's right. And you right. can actually watch the frost line on a virgin cylinder. You can watch the frost line and know how much liquid's left in that tank. So gotcha. it's a good point. You see that a lot, and that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah. Always uh, make sure your valves are all the way open. Always. You know, don't get in a rush when you go, okay, great, I got it all in here. It's time to go home. It's late. Slow down. Make sure you close everything in the right process before you go pulling your hoses off and yeah. make a mistake and you dump a pound of gas. Now uh, it's all the gas you had on your truck. Now you've got to run back to the parts house. So just be careful with what you're doing. You know, there's things called EPA guidelines. We have to be careful handling refrigerant. We've got to do it the right way. It's our responsibility to do it the right way. So it's a big part of the job. When you're putting liquid in, mm -hmm. um, you said uh, 10 PSI above the operating pressure. Yes, mm -hmm. Make sure you don't go over that. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Do you have to wait a certain amount of time to make sure that you know you don't you're not you don't have any liquid in the system that you're going to be slugging in the compressor? Uh, not really. You know, I, I would definitely let it start. Let the compressor start. I give it a minute or so before I start adding any gas. For sure, you want to make sure the compressor's running fans run and it's just charging heat, then you can slowly crack that guy. Just be real gentle and crack it nice and slow and take your time. Don't, don't wrench it because yeah. the closer this is to the compressor, the more critical it is to make sure that liquid vaporizes. If the compressor's only a foot away, I yeah. might go less than 10 PSI just to be on the safe side. Another good thing you can do is if you can look in there, fan's gonna be running, take your hat off, you can see visually if the suction line is starting to frost up going back to the compressor. If it is, that's liquid refrigerant. So the closer that frost line gets to the compressor, that's closer liquids get to it. If you see it start frosting, close it. Let it thaw back out, then crack it again and work it. You just have to take your time. Yeah. Um, but that's that's the best way I've done it. That's That's really the right way to do it. Like I said, seen them do it. I'm not gonna lie and say I haven't done it myself, but I'm also not gonna lie and say I have broken a recovery machine doing it because they're not made to pump liquid in reverse. It damages the valves and those things and they're expensive tools. And they're kind of the lifeblood of everything we yeah. do. So you gotta have it. Nice. Just make sure solid scales, you know, if, if you got any questions about your scales, if they're reading right, make sure you compare them. If you, another tech, you can weigh the same thing on a different set of scales and just make sure your scales are, are right. Um, things can get off, things can get out of calibration, you know, Always use digital scales. Don't use freaking bathroom scales or a fish scale. I've actually seen people picking a refrigerant tank up with a fish scale and doing it that way. So yeah, just gotta have the right tools to do the job right. Don't cut corners. So much work you just did in whatever repair you made and you're almost at the finish line. You don't wanna screw it up now. You wanna finish it right um, and make sure you walk away feeling good about it. Charging, you're not so worried about the, the tank uh, no, that's a good point, John. Yeah, when you're charging, it's all it's it's not really getting that tank hot. It's all going in here, yeah. so you don't have to worry about the hose or the ice or anything. Nothing to worry about there. Good point. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Yes, sir. All right. Well, thanks for checking us out on Mechanical Pros. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and uh, tell your friends. If you guys want anything specific, uh, let us know in the comments, and we'll try to answer it.